In this video, we'll take a look at how to create pop-ups in PyQt6. There are a variety of pop-ups that we can use to show a message. We can use queue message box to receive user input. We can use queue input dialog. And there are also specific dialogs such as queue color dialog or queue phone dialog to let the user pick a phone that they have installed. Just to go over this starter code that I have here, I've created a simple window and added a push button to it as the central widget. The first pop-up window that we'll take a look at is queue message box. Queue message box is used to show the user a message. This can be some information or a warning. We will first start by importing it. I will show the pop-up whenever the user clicks on the push button. So to do this, we first need to add an event handler to the push button when the button has been clicked. And we can do so by writing self.button.click. And then we can connect it to an event handler which we will create. Within this click handler, we will first create a new instance of the queue message box. We will then connect our click handler using the connect method that we used above. We also need to execute our queue message box like how we execute our application to run it. If we run it now and we click on the push button, we can see that we have an empty pop-up window. To add text to this pop-up window or dialog box, we can use the set text method. We can also set the window title of our dialog using the set window title method. So if we run it now, we can see our text and our window title being displayed in our pop-up window. Another thing you will see often on pop-up windows are icons. And we can also set an icon of our message box using the set icon method. Now there are a few icons that we can choose from and the options are under qmessagebox.icons. In my case, I'll just choose the information icon. There are a few other possible icons as well, which are critical, warning, information, as well as question. Something that you might also want to add to your pop-up window are buttons. And we can do so by using the set standard buttons method. The options for which buttons we can add are under QMessageBox.StandardButtons. In my case, I'll just add an OK button as an example. So if we run the application now, we can see that we have an OK button. And note that in a dialog, whenever a button has been clicked on it, the dialog window will close. If we wanted to add multiple buttons to our pop-up window, we can separate them with a pipe symbol. For example, I'll add a cancel button as well. Here are a list of button options you'll use the most often. I'll link the full list to the PyQt6 documentation in the description below. When we add multiple buttons, you'll probably also want to know which button the user has clicked on and react differently. And to do so, we first need to store the button that the user has clicked on, which we can do by storing the return value of when our pop-up window has been executed. So what we are doing here is that once the dialog has been closed by the user, the button that they have clicked on will be written and we will store it in this variable. In my case, I have just stored it in a variable called click button. So to check which button they have clicked on, we can use a simple if statement and compare if the clicked button is, for example, the OK button. And if it is, we can react differently from if they clicked on the cancel button. In my case, I'll just print something to the terminal as an example, but in your case, you'll probably want to react differently based on your application's needs. Note that our Python script here will only continue to run after the execute method once the user has closed out of the dialog. So this if statement will only run once the dialog has been closed. 
So if we run the application now, we can see that our script reacts differently based on the button that the user has clicked on in the queue message box. The next dialog window that we have here is the queue input dialog, which is used to make a dialog window that accepts user input. I'll first delete the previous code that we had, and we will then import and initialize a new queue input dialog once the user has clicked on our push button. We then need to execute it. And if we run the application now, we can see that our pop-up window has a simple input field. And within this dialog, we can also change the label tags using the set label tags method. And after the dialog has been closed, we can then print the value that the user has entered using the text value method available on our queue input dialog. And if we run the application now, we can see that whatever the user has entered will be printed to the terminal once they have closed out of the dialog. We might also want to know whether the user has clicked on the OK button or the cancel button. And to do so, we can use the value that executing the dialog returns like we did previously. And I will just print out what that return value is to show you. If we run the application and click OK on our dialog, we can see that it returns a value of 1. And if we click Cancel, it returns a value of 0. So if we wanted to check which button the user has clicked on, we can use an if statement to check if it is equal to 1 or 0. But actually we do not need to check if it is equals to 1 and that is because our if statement automatically converts our condition here to a boolean value and 1 is considered a true value while 0 is considered a false value. So we can actually just check if clicked OK and then perf to perform a certain task. And if we run our application again, we can see that it works as expected. If the user clicks OK, it prints out whatever they have entered. And if not, it just prints out that the dialog has been cancelled. And lastly, we can also restrict the input field to only accept numbers. And to do this, we will need to set the input mode of our dialog. We can do so using the set input mode method. And within this method, we can specify an option that is available on QInputDialog.input mode. In my case, I will choose the int input which stands for integer input. We will then receive the current value using the int value method instead of the text value method. So if we run the application now, we can see that the user is only able to enter integers as the input. Now that we have covered some of the more common dialog windows you'll use, I'll showcase some of the more specific built-in dialogs in PyQt6. Firstly, we have the queue color dialog, which shows a color dialog where the user can select a color, either using a color palette or from the presets. I will then import and initialize as well as to execute the color dialog whenever the user clicks the button. I will store the return value to a variable to know if the user clicked OK or Cancel. If we run the application now, we can see that the user has a color palette as well as a few preset options to choose their colors from. They also have more configuration available to them such as just entering the hex code of the color that they are looking for. And to showcase how your application might work when receiving user input, I will create an if statement. So if the user clicks on the OK button, I will then print out the current color that they have selected. And we can do so using the current color method available on our queue color dialog. And if not, I'll just print out that the dialog has been cancelled. And if we run the application now, when the user selects a color and clicks the, the OK button on the dialog, it prints out the Q color object. If we instead just wanted to receive the color as a hex code, we can use the dot name method that is available on the Q color object. 
so if we run the application now we can see that when the user has selected a color it prints out the hex code of the color that they have selected lastly we have the queue font dialog this is a dialog that shows the current fonts the user has installed on their device and lets them select a font that they have installed with other options such as changing the font size before we start with this project, I will add a label at the top and a button below. This is so that we can see how the fonts can be used. And I'll do so by first importing QVBox layout as well as QLabel. I will then set the parent layout as QVBox layout and I'll also add a label. And within this parent layout, I'll add the label first and then the button. And finally, I will also add a center widget. And within this center widget, I'll set the layout as the parent layout. If you are wondering how layouts work and why we added it this way, I've covered it in one of my previous videos. Once the button has been clicked, we can then create a new instance of QFont dialog. I'll once again assign this to a variable to see if the user clicked the OK or the Cancel button. And if we run the application now, we can see that when the push button has been clicked, it gives the user a font dialog where they can select the fonts they have installed from. Your fonts might be different from mine since we have different fonts installed. We can also print what font they have selected. We can first use an if statement to check if they have clicked on the OK button. And if so, we'll print the current font, and that is using the current font method available on our QFont dialog. So if we run the application now, we can see that whenever I pick a new font and close out of the dialog, it prints a QFont object which holds information about the font that the user selected. And what we can do with that, for example, would be to set the font of our label. And we can do that using the set font method available on our Q label, like we have seen in previous videos. So if we run the application now, whatever font the user has selected will be set as the font of the label. Now, if instead of using the QFont object, you wanted to print something such as the font family that the user has selected, we can do that using the family method that is available on the QFont object. So if we run the application now, we can see that once the user has selected a font and close off with the dialog, it also prints out what font family they have selected. Here are a few other methods for checking the font size that the user has selected as well. And I'll link the QFont documentation in the description below so that you can check out all the available methods. So just to summarize, the two most common dialogs you use are Q message box and Q input dialog. On Q message box, we can configure things like the icon and the text. On the Q input dialog, we can configure things like the input mode and the text as well. If you want a specific dialog for the user to select a color, use Q color dialog. And for allowing the user to select a font that they have installed, 
use Qphone dialog. That's about it for this video. In the next one, I will showcase how to convert PyQt6 applications to executables that you can give users to download on their device. If this video has been helpful to you or if you have enjoyed it, please help by possibly subscribing or liking this video to help my channel grow.